So uh, uh, we'll have we'll have that information available, that web link uh, available again later. But uh, yeah, Larry, wherever he went, uh, uh, hopefully he'll come join us again. <laughs> but uh, uh, he's 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 a great resource, and we're we're proud to have him on our team. Great, thanks. Uh, so now I'm, I'm going to go through and do a quick introduction on our family of companies, um, just to be sure that everybody's aware of, you know, who we are and uh, especially since we brought multiple companies together. So I'll share my screen here. So we are now these four companies that have come together uh, as one company uh, under one roof. And so the four companies are HL Flake Security Hardware. International Key Supply, McDonald Dash Locksmith Supply, and HE Mitchell Companies. So between these four, we now have five locations uh, spread out across the US. And really our goal um, is to get as close to as many of our customers as possible. We wanna get um, all of the US in that one and two day shipping zone to really try to deliver to you uh, as quickly as possible, you know, knowing that you work off of a lot of times or many times off of an uh, on time at once inventory. So you're scheduling a job, you need that job, you need to be able to receive items, you know, in one day or two days uh, in order to, you know, supply your customers needs. So, um, so what we really bring um, as a distributor, the real benefit that we bring to you, our customers, uh, is based in our uh, broad selection of product. So we, in our family of companies, have really have the most broad offering uh, in our channel. You know, and, and our companies are really set up for the locksmith or for the security professional, in that we can be a one-stop shop for whatever it is you're looking for. Um, and that's from automotive, you know, all the programming equipment and tools, as well as uh, keys and remotes, you know, the full gamut of keys. Um, and then access control, you know, today we're here to talk about Ross Lair and Bluetooth readers. Um, you know, we stock thousands and thousands of items that are for access control. Um, and then commercial and residential hardware padlocks. You know, we here in Houston have one of the largest inventories of padlocks in the nation. Uh, and then safes, we stock safes as well as uh, safe locks and safe tools and equipment. Um, and then just general locksmithing tools. You know, we pride ourselves on, on keeping our ear uh, to in the industry to know what new tools are coming out and have those available. And then also key machines, you know, any key machine that you're looking for uh, any type of key machine that you're looking for, we, we will have a solution for you. Um, and then, you know, what are the other benefits that we as a company bring to you, our, our locksmith customer or our, you know, security integrator customer? It is that broad selection um, of items that are actually in stock. They're actually sitting on our shelf and ready to be shipped. And then we pride ourselves on having speed, you know, so if you order today that uh, that order will ship today, and we have very late cutoff times. Uh, at least here in the, in, uh, the central time zone, it's a 5 p.m. cutoff time. And then we pride ourselves on having high fill, fill rates. You know, that's what helps us and makes us a reliable partner in that when you place an order, you can know that that item is actually going to be on the order and it's, that you will receive um, what you've ordered. Uh, and then also we try to partner well with you, our customer, by being knowledgeable. We spend a lot of time uh, educating our sales staff um, on, you know, we have a lot of technical webinars and trainings. You know, we used to bring trainers in-house. Now we're doing it all as webinars um, to make sure that our sales staff is trained. And then we also have dedicated technical support staff in the business. Uh, Brenton, who's with us today, is a dedicated um, access control support person. He's not in sales, you know, really. He, he's actually here just as a technical support. And so he's somebody that you could reach out to um, whether you want help setting up a whole system or whether you just have questions about individual components. Uh, he could be a great resource for you. Uh, and then as a distributor, we 
look to have highly competitive pricing. You know, that's by listening to what's going on in the market, listening to you, our customers. Uh, and then lastly, I, I want to point out that as a combined company, these four companies now have one low free freight minimum of $100 to get free ground. And then any order that's under the $100 minimum is a flat $9.95 shipping rate. Uh, we did that just to make it as easy for you, our customer, as possible, just to know what your, uh, what your freight costs would be. Um, and then be sure to check out uh, our events page. We're, this is where we update the webinars or, or other online events that we have happening throughout the week. Uh, we also have coming up this week um, a what we call the Security Professional Business Roundtable. It happens every Thursday at 1 Central. Um, and it's an hour long live streamed conversation where we're talking about a business topic. So, you know, this isn't technical about products. It's really about um, running your business. And so actually this week, we're gonna continue the conversation about having dedicated salespeople. Um, and we're gonna talk more specifically about how do you measure that, measure those people? How do you motivate them? How do you compensate them? Uh, and if you want to check out last week's conversation, which was also about dedicated salespeople, that is up on our YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, we stream that live to Facebook and YouTube every Thursday at 1 Central. Uh, and all of the webinars that we've been doing, uh, we're adding them to our YouTube channels. Um, and as of right now, if it's commercial act or access control related, we're putting it up on HL Flakes YouTube. If it's automotive related, we're putting it up on International Key Supply. Um, I say that, uh, but actually this today's webinar is live streamed to International Key Supply. So if you wanted to go check it out after the fact, uh, you can go to International Key Supply to check it out. Uh, so with that, um, I am going to hand it over to Greg and Larry and let you guys take it from here. So again, if you have questions, uh, put it in the Q&A section or you can raise hand and, and you can ask the question live. So well, thank you for being here and I'm, I'll pass it over to Greg and Larry. Thank you. Well, thanks Travis. Thanks for uh, uh, the opportunity to be here today. And thank, thank you Brent for, for uh, inviting us as well. We look forward to, to our time today. Uh, today we're specifically talking about Bluetooth. Bluetooth is an important topic uh, as of late with uh, COVID-19. But it, we're not a Johnny come lately to the Bluetooth program. We've had uh, Bluetooth readers and Bluetooth uh, apps available for um, some time now. And uh, I introduced him virtually earlier when he was uh, offline, but uh, uh, Larry is, is, as I mentioned, is our uh, uh, chief technical support uh, person there in, in our South Lake office, which is just outside of Dallas. So Larry, if you're ready, I'll turn it over to you. You can give yourself uh, an updated introduction and, and All right. walk us through the Bluetooth waters. All righty. Well, good afternoon. And again, uh, thank you to our host for having us here today. I am Larry Barnes. I'm the technical support manager in South Lake. And we do have a staff of three, three tech support engineers in South Lake answering calls. We are currently doing it via voicemail. So if you call in, You'll leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you as quickly as we can. And that's because we're all working from home or off site. So with that, let me see if I can get my presentation up here to talk about our Bluetooth products here. All right. And we have, uh, just very quickly, we have a, uh, a small selection of, of Bluetooth uh, equipped readers. So we have two uh, door, I'll call them door readers, or, you know, RFID readers that are MyFair, CSN with Bluetooth and NFC capability. And that's the, the H6255, which does not have a keypad and the 6355 with a keypad. Then we also have two long range readers, the AYU 915 and 920. I'm going to go through both of those, but uh, those use 900 megahertz um, UHF tags, excuse me, but they too also incorporate a, a Bluetooth receiver and will work just like our, our Bluetooth uh, RFID re readers. So 
these are the door readers, the 6255, as I said. The only difference between them is no keypad and with a keypad. So these readers will both do <coughs> MyFair uh, in CSN mode, meaning card serial number only. They are not sector readers, so it is not encrypted. It's not as secure, but it will read the CSN on most any MyFair card or NFC tags. Uh, I've got a whole list of them here in the presentation of the different media that it will read. Then the DR6255 is a desktop USB reader that will read all those same devices or tags. It does not do the Bluetooth, but uh, it allows you to enroll the, the various MyFair credentials into the Axtrax NG if you're using them with our access control system. So the 6255, as I said, MyFairs, which do CSN on MyFair credentials, NFC tags, or Bluetooth and NFC credentials from smartphones. The uh, 6255, they work on industry standard MyFair cards, and like I said, many NFC tags. I've got some samples here somewhere that are uh, round, one, about one inch uh, black tags that work great on the back of my uh, fob for my truck. So, but that is the full list of the various MyFair and NFC credentials. The, the reader can be configured for multiple or for different output formats and also quite a few other uh, parameters like how the LEDs act during a read, what's the, you know, <clears throat> what mode are they in when the uh, reader is idle versus when it's read a card, and also the uh, uh, operation of the sounder in there, when it beeps, how it beeps, things of that nature. But the main thing is with the config tool is you can set the output format for not so much for the card that you're using, but for the system you're tying it into and what level of, of uh, security you want. So if you take a, a newer seven byte card, a seven UID card, you can set it for a full 56 bit credential number, uh, even less likely to ever have a duplicate or uh, and cuts down on the cloning some. So by default, it outputs standard 26-bit Wigan. It takes the card serial number, converts it, and sends it like a standard 26-bit uh, with facility code. The AYU 915-920 long range readers. Now that's the, the 915 is about uh, 12 inches. The 920 is about 14 inches square. And the difference is the read range. 915 is good to 20 meters and, uh, excuse me, 20 feet and a 920 is good to 40 feet. So um, it too incorporates the same Bluetooth technology. So you can have your, your phone with you and use it as a credential. Say you jump in the car and you're, you don't have the tag with you or you're in someone else's car without a tag. You can use your phone to open the gate or the garage or whatever. So uh, it's good as a backup to the tag. And then uh, uh, the 915, 920 work with industry standard, 900 megahertz, EPC Gen 2 credentials, UHF credentials, which we sell several styles of. Output again, standard 26-bit Wigan. Other output options are available upon request. Uh, you cannot do it yourself in the, uh, the firmware at this time. And there's a Bluetooth app also to configure the reader, which I'll go into in more detail in a minute. And I keep forgetting to get rid of that last line there. That's from another presentation. Hey, Larry, uh, real quick. Ben's got a question. It says, oh. will they read 26-bit uh, Wigan cards? Neither of these will, well, neither of these will read regular 26-bit prox cards, no. Uh, it outputs the data from the MyFair cards or the UHF cards in a 26-bit format, but they won't read your standard Rossler prox cards, 125 kilohertz, or uh, HID prox cards, no. Uh, these are our 900 megahertz format credentials, a, a prox type card, a credit card style card, PVC plastic, hard tag that's made to be mounted on the outside of the vehicle, 
a long narrow strip that mounts to the inside of the windshield. This is just a paper strip, looks like a big Band-Aid. Or the, uh, the credit card size tamper evident tags. Of all of the tags, these, whoops, the, the LTUVGs read the best because it's got the longest antenna. So just has nothing to do with the Bluetooth side of it. This is the, the 900 megahertz credential, but basic wiring for the 915, 920. Uh, it has its own power supply. We do need to connect the signal ground, and, which is also the power ground, back through to the, the access control panel. So only three wires from the 915 to the access panel. So our BLAID app is the same for both, and it's very straightforward. Uh, now, Bluetooth app looks virtually identical between Android and iPhone. It's available on both app stores. You download it, install it, and unlike some other options out there, with ours, the, the Bluetooth app, uh, you just download and install. You don't have to uh, man. You don't manage it remotely. It basically reads in serial number, MAC address, etc., and it comes up with a unique hash that represents your phone, which I'll show you in a moment. And it then transmits that to the Bluetooth receiver, which in turn formats it into that 26-bit Wigan value. So. There, there is no other credential. You can't manage it remotely other than the fact that you can turn it off and on in the Axtrax NG software. It just appears as another card, bottom line. There is no other back end that you have to manage through or issue cards out of uh, or any other charges. Right now, the Bluetooth app is free for both Android and iPhone. So uh, your, your user can simply download that app and then get the number enrolled by the whoever's managing the system. So when you open the app up, you'll see the doors that are in range and you can name them all uh, as you see here. You basically just touch on it and you'll get a confirmation that the request was sent. In this case, I did the front door. So pretty straightforward. If you hit the settings, uh, if you go into settings here, hit the hamburger menu as they call it in Android, then if you click on info, that's going to gener uh, pull up this screen. And what this is, this is the hash that it has generated for your Bluetooth ID and for your NFC ID. Now, NFC is not available on iPhones at all, and it's only available on some Androids. So if your phone is equipped with an NFC radio, you'll get the data. If it's not, obviously, it, it won't generate a code for it. But if you click send as email, it'll send that information to whoever you address it to, presumably the manager of the system. And once they get that email, they'll get an email that looks like this. There is a converter that they can use uh, offline to just copy and paste your ID in here, tell it to generate the 26-bit equivalent, and give it to you that way. And that way, you can enter that directly into um, your access control. Sorry, I see a question up here. Uh, the only reason uh, to answer the question, what's the benefit of using the 26-bit format? It seems not as secure as other formats. Uh, I can't argue that. The more bits, the better. I think it. the real reason was just to maintain compatibility, if you will, with older systems. As I said, we can uh, set these up with longer bit strings. Obviously, we've got plenty of bits to play with here. So if you want to send it in a long, you know, want to send more bits, like I said, the 56 bit uh, for the MyFair cards, for instance, then that can be done. So, all right, does that answer your question? I apologize, I, with my bifocals, I have to uh, look around on the screen. It's hard to see the, uh, the chat screen there, so. On the, the admin app, 
um, yeah, it's done with the with the ID. Like I said, the ID app is pretty straightforward, very simple. The admin app though allows you to configure the readers. Now, in the case of the the door readers, if you will, the 6255s, really all you can set on them is the name, and you would simply type the name in here, hit rename, and that's it. Or you can change the password. The the default password is one two three four five six seven eight. It's in the manuals and everything. That's not something like a, that's a big secret. Uh, I do recommend you do that because people can download this app and otherwise get in and play with the, the readers. So, um, but really on the 6255, that's all you can do from here. If you hit identify reader, that just makes the sounder and the reader sound off for a few seconds. So you can, if you have multiple Bluetooth readers, you know for sure you're logged into the right one. And transmit credential, does exactly that. It's just like touching that in the uh, ID app. It sends your credential representing your phone. Now, for reasons I don't understand, the credential set by sent by the admin app will not match the one sent by the BLE ID app. So you can differentiate those two depending on what mode you're in. The admin app uh, does cost. I think it's three dollars on on Android. I'm not sure on on iPhone probably the same or within a dollar. And this would only be required for the installer to, to name the reader and do that sort of thing, all right? And with the, the door readers, that's really about it. The, uh, if you are using the NFC option, as I said, that's built into the same app. So if your phone's equipped with NFC, you can, add that number to the system also. Now it does show up as a different number. Uh, with the NFC uh, operation, what you do is you simply unlock your phone. You do not have to open the app up or anything. You unlock the phone, hold it up to the reader. Now this is only true for the 6255, 6355 door readers, not the long range. So you just unlock the phone, hold it up to it. It does have to be in very close proximity. NFC's called that for a reason, near field communication. So hold it up close to it. It'll beep just like any other MyFair credential and read it. And again, that's another one where we can set it up to output in, in longer formats if you wish. The admin app when used with the 915, 920, this is uh, kind of going back to the beginning. You select which one you want to work on, hit the gear on it, log in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With the 915 and 920, that's going to bring you into this screen. Now, the screen starts here and ends here. It's all one big long screen here. With this screen, we actually do have some configuration options where we can set a lot of different uh, parameters, mainly for the, the UHF side of it, though the timing, uh, how often it reads, how often it transmits data here, the output power of the reader, as you can see here, I had this one, this is in my office here at the house, so I have it set down to a very low power so I can actually get the badge far enough away from it that it quits reading it and, and I can read another one that don't interfere with each other. And you can turn off and on you know, uh, the LED, our uh, long range reader has an LED on it that shows when it's done a valid read. You can mute that, so to speak, turn it off completely. You can turn off the UHF functionality if you want to and use it just as a big long range Bluetooth reader. So, And you can, you can select the different transmission protocols. This reader does also support OSDP, so it can be used on different types of systems using either Wigan or OSDP interface. So. Um, but as I said, most of these have to do more with the configuration of the UHF side, read mode timing versus triggered. You can have like a gate loop or something sending a trigger to the reader so it's not sitting there scanning all the time. Uh, several parameters like that that you can set. And then once you're done, you hit update. That writes all the changes out to your reader and you're, you're done with the admin app. And that's basically it on the, the Bluetooth uh, and the NFC for that matter. It's, it's pretty simple once you understand what apps do what and how to enroll them. 
Now you can, for instance, uh, simply uh, with the Bluetooth or NFC, just scan your phone at the reader, the number will show up in the event log, at least again, using Axtrax NG. And it can be entered that way. You can send it in to have them hand enroll it, uh, not have to uh, try and coordinate reading your phone at a particular time so the operator knows. And there are, there is another uh, desktop reader that will do the Bluetooth also, but it's not built into the one that does the cards and NFC. The, uh, the DR6255 will also allow you to enroll your phone, phone's NFC radio or NFC tags, just like the MyFair credentials. So. Any more questions? Uh, anything I've skipped over that? I haven't seen any questions. I do want to, you know, the 6255 and the 6355 uh, are both uh, uh, indoor or outdoor. They're potted, so you can uh, put them either location. Um, and on all the readers we, we talked about today, as much as I would love to see just a closed ecosystem with Rosslayer, they do do work with other controllers as well. So you, you, you're able yeah. to use these with with uh, just about any other Wigan, uh, any other controller that I will accept um, Wigan, Wigan output. Um, Larry, did you talk about the range on the Bluetooth? Um, I may have missed that, but it's somewhere around 35 feet. We've seen it get a little bit further. Well, but uh, in, a, in a perfect world, the, the BLE radio or receiver is good for 40 feet. Uh, mm -hmm. In reality, it, it all depends on the uh, interference, surroundings, et cetera. It is RFID. When I took one of the 6355 BTs and mounted on our front door on a metal single gang box that's bolted up to the metal door frame, I was getting a good 20 foot range from it out in the parking lot, close enough that when I pull up in front of the door, I could open the door in the morning from my truck. So uh, that was what I was after. So. It will vary quite a bit. Uh, you can also, there is an adjustment in the app itself. If you've got a bunch of these on doors, you can tell the app to only respond to ones that are close to you. So you don't see every door in the building, that sort of thing. But, um, but 20 feet is a real good number to figure you're good for 20 feet from it. I see one question that did uh, okay, let me take the questions in the order I saw them. Do any of these products have a way to audit who's been using them? No, these are just readers. So the audit trail would have to be in the access control system itself. These are not controllers. Um, so there is no audit trail there. A narrow site uh, size reader coming, not that I'm aware of at this time, uh, but never say never. There, we do have the, the, the 9,000 million that we should see something uh, soon, but uh, it's it's a little bit different style reader than than the uh, 62 or 6355. Yeah, there there we, there is another reader in in the works that we can't really tell you anything about yet because we honestly haven't seen the released information on it. We've we've heard lots of promises. Uh, so yeah, there will eventually be a, another reader added to the line that will be smaller. I can tell you that. So it will be a million size reader. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, are they weatherproof? Yes, these are all outdoor rated. Uh, as I said, I had a 6355 BT on the front of my building where it has just a, barely has any overhang from the roof. So it was totally exposed to the elements, including the Texas sun in the summertime, as well as, you know, raining cold in the winter. So they are, as, as Greg said, they're fully potted. They are weatherproof. They are outdoor rated. Um, the other thing, they are not anti-vandal because it is a plastic housing on the front. So it's, that's about the only thing. And Bluetooth, currently the, the Bluetooth will never show up in, in our anti-vandal housing at this point because of the radio. What would you say to a client who is worried about their reader being hacked? I don't have any real data to answer your question. I wish I did. The, the protocol that they use is all proprietary. Uh, there is security built into it in that they exchange tokens. 
so that the data is encrypted at some level. So I would say, you know, between the obscurity of it, it's not using some very common protocol. It is a, a unique uh, ROS layer protocol to communicate and a, some level of encryption, pretty, pretty small chance. They'd be much more apt to just have somebody clone a card and use it than actually hack the Bluetooth. So. Where are they made? Any risk of trade war issues? Uh, they are manufactured in China in our in our plant in in Shenzhen. Um, we've seen issues with the uh, the tariffs, but trade war, yeah, they do come in from overseas, so I guess theoretically they could be affected. You know, uh, to that point too is is we're, we're an Israeli-based company. We actually own our factory as opposed to uh, some of our competitors who have uh, to who lease the factory from from the Chinese government. So that that has uh, been been in our favor. Uh, and then uh, I mean, just like any anything any product that must be imported, you, know, you do have some some delays from time to time. But honestly, we've throughout this whole you know, the tariff wars and, and everything else, we really haven't had a ton of problems getting product. We, we have a, a uh, uh, warehouse in, in South Lake, which is right in between Dallas and Fort Worth, just north of DFW Airport. And so we actually stock most everything we sell in North America right there. And so any, you know, any, any, anything coming over is just to replenish our, our warehouse there in, uh, in South Lake. I, I do want to, uh, for our long range readers, uh, 920 and 915, I do, do also want to mention that with those, you don't have to have an aiming kit. Some of our competitors require you to purchase an aiming kit. That's not required with our, our long range readers. Our long range readers come with a power supply, uh, the, the mounting hardware, and the ability to use the LED light and the piezo to do all of your aiming. So that, that's um, another uh, cost that you don't have to spend on on uh, buying an aiming kit. We, we have have everything set up so you can uh, install it and, and uh, aim it and everything be good to go from, from the installation. I got another question about the DR6255. Is it for enrolling use only? Yes, primarily. The only other thing it can be used for is uh, the configuration cards to configure the readers. So, if you do want to set your reader up, for instance, to output, uh, I just did this this morning, as a matter of fact, for somebody, they wanted to output all seven bytes on a, a uh, MyFair card for a 56-bit ID. That's the way you configure the, the 6255, 6355 readers, is there's a little small utility that's free that you write a configuration card to a blank MyFair card with the DR6255. Then you simply power down the 6355, power it back up, and the first card that you present is your configuration card, and it reads that and changes the output format or and a few other uh, configurable options, like I mentioned before, like how the LEDs react, how the sounder works. So. Primarily, it's an enrollment device only, but it can. It's also used to build your configuration cards for the six two five five six three five five readers. And real quick on, on pricing, you're not going to find a better deal deal in the marketplace right now. Get with uh, the sales team there at, at uh, Flake, and they can they can get your uh, pricing. But the but the six two fifty five is just an incredibly priced unit right. for particularly for everything. Uh, everything it does, and then our long-range readers. Uh, I don't know if anyone comes even close to to the price we, we've got on those long-range readers. Uh, would you agree, Brent? Uh, right. Both both of yeah. them are priced really really well. Right. Um, yeah. One more question. Uh, the app is free, right? The app is the the the, the end user app. app. Is, yes, the end Go user ahead. app. No, and yeah. What about the credentials? Or you mean the, the, uh, the MyFair credentials, or the the actual credentials that are emailed that the admin user would. Well, send that's what out. I'm saying. That the the with our Bluetooth, there is no credential that gets emailed. You just download the app, 
install it on your phone. Right. And then actually the user would email that that hash that his phone generates back to the administrator. Got it. Who would then enter that into the access control system as though it was just another card. So the, there is no back end. You, you don't mail a credential out to a user like the the other guys. The do. Others, right. <laughs> now, I was, I was question was there's fees involved with uh, some of the others. That's what I was asking. Yeah, there, the there's not with ours or with, with for the ID. Uh, there is no fee at all. Now, that may change in the future. There's talk about doing something more uh, elaborate there where it can be managed remotely, et cetera. But for right now, the the ID app is a, a free download and you manage it on the back end just like it was another credential, just like another MyFair card. Got it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention on the the uh, along the lines of the range. So the the, the six two five five six three five five, as I said, you know, you've got a maximum in a in a perfect environment of forty feet, but it's, your mileage is going to vary depending on the the construction around you, etc. But the Bluetooth on the the nine fifteen and nine twenty, where it typically is mounted outdoors in a, a much more open environment, you really do see that, that 35 or 40 foot range then with it. So again, for gate use, something like that, you're gonna be able to trigger it from, you know, a fair distance back from it. So. Yeah, we got some incredible reports back from Vegas on uh, the reed range, uh, just because of, I presume that the climate there and being very dry, but it's, it's um, as Larry said, it, it, it'll vary a little bit, but it's, it's very powerful. Oh, and one other thing I did want to point out real quick. We have other readers in this same line, but you'll see. So if you are looking for the Bluetooth, make sure that it does say BT on the end. Good point. Because the there are AYH 6255s that will read all the MyFair credentials, uh, et cetera, but not the uh, Bluetooth. So. Uh, Ben's let's got see. A quick... From if can you discuss the exact part numbers we would need to set up a basic single door system with the Bluetooth reader? Okay, so single door again, one of the two readers. That is the full part number, depending on whether you want keypad or no keypad. So the AYH six two five five BT or six three five five BT, and then. The only other thing you would need for a single door system would be like an AC215 IP panel, the control panel to go with it, and of course your lock, whatever is appropriate for the for the door. Uh, and that's it. So for a single door system, one of these, an AC215 IP and your lock, and that, that's all you need for a, a single door system. And on the, on the 215, it's got a suffix dash BU. Ah, uh, so, yes, thank you, sorry. Yeah. So AC-215IP-BU. Uh, do you have any other color options of the housing? Not at this time. And I'm not aware of any coming, but no, there's black or black is it right now. Like it is a shiny T. black. Yeah, yes. it's like a Model T, except this is a nice shiny black, so. All right. Any other questions? And great questions, by the way. All, all the questions have come across are really good. I really appreciate those. 13. Just, just a quick plug with, with what uh, Travis and, and Brandon are doing there uh, for you. It's a tremendous resource you have. Uh, I, I'd encourage you to take advantage of it. I've, I've had many a conversation with, with Brent about particular products and you know providing support. And they have uh, they have a great team. They're a great resource to help build value to, to what you're doing. And of course, we're available as well. And, and Larry just put our contact information up there. Don't hesitate to reach out to us directly uh, if you if you do have any any questions. One more question. Yeah, does Rossler make uh, control software? We do. We have a uh, our our product Axtrax NG, uh, and it's available free. Uh, it, if you go to Axtrax, so that's A X T R A X N G dot com, and that's a 
website that Larry uh, maintains there in South Lake, but you have a you can download a zip file that's got the the most current uh, version of the software along with all the README and extra extra files that that you might run across or need uh, comes in in the zip file. But it, that software is available for free, up to 256 users, and we also have uh, three to four updates a year, which are both, or which are two, also 200, are free. 256 readers. Yeah, oh, what did I say? You I said users. 250. Oh, my, 256 my readers. 256 <laughs> readers. Good catch. I, I uh, <laughs> good catch. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's it's a it's a pretty sizable uh, software with with uh, available for free. Um, it can be installed uh, both on site or remotely. Uh, if, if you're planning a remote installation, get with Larry and the team ahead of time so they can uh, make sure that they point you in the right direction as far as what you're going to need as far as uh, any back end or technical uh, assistance. But um, I'd recommend, you know, go to our website and download it. And there are certain features you have access to uh, without connecting it to a controller. Uh, there's another question. Do you have a recommendation for a credential that can't be cloned? In in terms of credentials that these read, there is no such thing because it, it's reading the, the CSN. So by its very nature, that can be cloned. Now, your the Bluetooth of your phone, much more difficult. I mean, it in itself is, is uh, cloning it, per se, would be much more difficult. Of course, it could be emulated if somebody knew your code, but by something else. But we do have our as, OS. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say now, if you're looking for a, a credential uh, that truly can't be cloned or is very, very difficult to clone, we never say never on in terms of cloning cards, we have a line of, of uh, more secure MyFair readers called the O2S, where Everything on the card, all the data, the important data, is written in using a 64 or 128 bit encryption and requires a 64 or 128 bit key to even read the data from the card to begin with. And that's, in my fair terms, that's referred to as a sector read. And it's, uh, that's the same technology that HID uses in their I class. Uh, no, they're not interchangeable because you know, the whole idea is to make them as, as secure as possible. So they don't have our key encryption keys. We don't have theirs, that sort of thing. But those are much more difficult to break. Can it be broken? Yes. Uh, you know, anything can be with enough money and time, but those are much more secure in general but that doesn't include the the NFC or the the uh, the Bluetooth options. That's that's just a secure MyFair option. So, and that's yeah, for those of you who don't, S? yeah, O to S, O to S, okay, open to secure. Yeah, yeah called O to S. The the base part of the part number is sixty two seventy or sixty two eighty for the readers, sixty three for the sixty three seventy sixty three eighty for the uh, ones with keypad. Um, uh, if, if you're interested, I can, one of us can certainly get you some data sheets rounded up where you can see pictures of them. They're very nice readers. They are secure, um, work well, they look nice. Have maybe that's not upcoming, gained a lot of traction uh, though. Maybe that's an upcoming webinar, right? Yeah. Set that up what me. I was thinking about putting together was more of a, uh, here are the reader and credential options and kind of a, a chart starting from, you know, the old tried and true EM credentials own up, if you will, in terms of uh, security. So maybe we can put that together for a future webinar here and which yeah. readers they work with, you know, at the same time type of thing. So. You know, real, real, real quick, just to kind of wrap things up, real quick about Rossler. For those of you who are not familiar with it, Rossler has been in the access control business and in the U.S. since the 80s. We are the manufacturer. We manufacture 90 plus percent of our product, but we also manufacture for some of the leading uh, access control uh, companies uh, in the business. We, we do uh, make 
products for HID, Honeywell, Bosch, uh, among others. We don't, uh, clearly don't make all their product line, but we do make some of it. And in fact, Honeywell, Honeywell's number one selling reader is a reader we make for them. Uh, so uh, if, if you haven't heard about us before, uh, like to get in for more, more, more information, reach out to Brent or the sales team there at uh, HL Flaker, your, your associated company, or give us a call. We'd be glad to try to fill in the gaps and, and uh, uh, help, help you grow your business. Right. So um, it looks like we do have one hand that was raised here. Um, sorry, I don't. I, I was out there for a minute, but I'm. I jumped back in. So Barry, it looks like if you want to ask a question, you can go ahead. Hi, Barry. So I've op I've uh, turned it on for him. If he if he is able to. If you want to unmute, uh, unmute yourself, Barry, fire away. Um, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> so well, let us know, Barry, if we can help. Don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Oh, one more here. Let's see. Uh, Tabitha, can you un unmute your mic? I believe so. Okay. Hey, Barry. Great. Hi, Tabitha. Yeah. Um, is there a limit to how many cards or how many phones you can actually link to this reader? No, the because uh, you're really not linking to the reader itself. It's it's just transmitting a credential to it whenever you're in range, and that's it. So the only limitation would be on the back end on the access control system, and like ours is you know fifty thousand plus users. So. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. That's unlimited. Yeah, again, nothing is stored in the reader itself. It's consider it a, I hate to use the term dumb, but it is. It's a dumb terminal, essentially, that's merely passing the data to an access control system. So there's no information of any kind actually stored in the reader itself. So one steals a reader, they're not going to be able to glean any info from it. There's no, uh, no footprint of anybody that's used it, that sort of thing. So brilliant. that's all yeah. on the back end. Our 825, by the way, for, for your information, our 825 controller can have up to 100,000 credentials. Nice. Thanks for the questions. Great question. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? You can raise hand or um, add it in the Q&A section. Smoke signal, carrier pigeon. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you very much, everybody, for your time today. Thank you, um, thank you Greg and, and Larry, for joining us today You're and for welcome. the information. Yeah. Um, and it sounded like you guys were already kind of wrapping it up, but feel free to reach out to any of us, whether you want to reach out to Brenton um, or Greg or Larry. So. Um, and I will say if, uh, if you're in Texas or Alabama, we do have CEUs available for the webinars um, and we're generating those and we will email you a PDF basically of the certificate. So thank you very much. Everybody have a, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Y'all right. be safe. Thank you. Everybody be safe out there.